street art is booming in Morocco. The sixth edition of the Hadar Street Art Festival finished in Rabat last Sunday and the results are everywhere to be seen. A new generation of Moroccan street artists have taken to the streets of the capital and other cities to spread their artistic visions in large scale over buildings and walls. For 25-year-old muralist Omar Lamzi, street art sits somewhere between a sport and total freedom. Street art is total freedom. Imagine a person passes in front of a wall where there's a mural of the hands of God or any other taboo subject. I believe that there would be a reaction. Street art first appeared in Morocco in Casablanca around the turn of the century. The first street art festival took place in 2013. The initiative seduced local residents as well as institutions and the private sector. Creating a work of art on a wall is also a way to help enhance the space, but also to give it a colorful, warm, friendly tone, allowing the eyes and the mind to soak up a new reality, which is that the urban culture is gaining influence and consistency in Morocco. Every year the Moroccan scene grows and the festival contributes to this by inviting beginners to give their first brush strokes on a collective wall. The artistic director of the festival believes that color can have a positive effect in any neighborhood. Uh, in color in an aggressive space comes the spirit. It's really quite simple. It's a very basic concept. You bring color into a neighborhood that is struggling. People appreciate the work. Children grow up with colors. It's a lot more colorful. From humble beginnings in Casablanca to that street art has come a long way in Morocco. A Nigerian fighter jet early on Sunday bombarded Kwatadamba Masara in Lake Chad, which straddled Nigerian neighboring Chad, Niger, and Cameroon. At least 20 fishermen were killed accidentally in the Nigerian military strike on the jihadist camp in northeast Nigeria. Security forces, personnel, hunters, fishermen and Boko Haram insurgents all live in the same area. Unfortunately, they found the location of the enemies. The fighter jets started firing immediately and it was very difficult for them to differentiate between locals and the enemies. They have buried around 10 people now. From what we know, about three fighter jets approached us and fired sporadically. In my case, God, in his infinite mercy and wisdom, protected me, but others close to me were hit. ISIS affiliate Islamic State West Africa province ISWAP recently lifted a ban on fishermen in the territory, leading to an influx of fishermen in the area. Currently, there's no way to differentiate them from the terrorists, according to a local intelligence. Morocco on Tuesday criticized a decision by France to reduce the number of visas granted to people from the country. At a press conference in the capital Rabat, Foreign Affairs Minister Nasser Barita called the announcement unjustified. <laughs> We consider this decision as unjustified for various reasons. First, Morocco has always managed responsibly the migration issue and the flow of people. A French government spokesman said Tuesday the decision was prompted by the refusal of former colonies Algeria, Tunisia and Morocco to take back people unwanted by Paris. We consider in Morocco that this decision is a repression for Moroccans and a repression for the freedom of travel and movement, as announced in the international conventions and agreements on travel and roaming between countries. France should not forget that there are several students who leave each year to France to complete their studies. Moroccan tourists also, and I think that this is a big problem for these two categories. Facing an election next year, French President Emmanuel Macron is keen to act tough on migrants.
Malian Transitional Prime Minister Shoge Maiga is welcomed by ministers and a crowd of supporters upon his return to Mali from New York at the United Nations General Assembly. In a speech on Saturday, Maiga accused France for the drawdown of the Bakin mission, saying it was an abandonment of Mali, a claim France refutes. To give our support in the fight against corruption, injustice, and also the interference of our problems by Western states. A large number of people came to show their support for the speech delivered by the Malian Prime Minister at the UN General Assembly, a popular support for a political display. And we, the Malian people, are behind this transition. We are behind our government because we are the ones who have entrusted the destiny of our country to this crack team, on whom we are counting and we are ready to be their shield wherever the need arises. It's not them, it's the people. Mali's army-dominated government in Bamako is reportedly close to hiring 1,000 Wagner paramilitaries from Russia, a move France want would isolate Mali internationally. Independent investigators mandated by the World Health Organization, WHO, to probe allegations of sexual abuse by its staff in the Democratic Republic of Congo have cited clear structural failures and individual negligence in a report released on Tuesday. The review team was able to establish that the alleged victims were promised jobs in exchange for the relationships or were sexually exploited in order to get and keep a job with the response. The abuses were committed by personnel hired locally as well as members of international teams in the Democratic Republic of Congo to fight an Ebola outbreak from 2018 to 2020. We in WHO are indeed humbled, horrified and heartbroken by the findings of this inquiry. I'd like also to thank all the women and girls who have come forward and given evidence to the investigation and thus have given us the basis on which to take action. The commission interviewed dozens of women who were offered work in exchange for sex or who were victims of rape. The 35-page report paints a grim picture, noting the scale of incidents of sexual exploitation and abuse in the response to the 10th Ebola outbreak. <laughs>